In 2005, the Flamingo Lodge, which is essentially a hotel here in Everglades National Park, was wiped out by two hurricanes, Hurricane Katrina and Hurricane Wilma. The damage was so significant that a couple years later, they just figured it cannot be repaired. It would have to be entirely demolished. Now, fast forward to 2023, I am very happy and excited to report that the Flamingo Lodge is back. All right, so we are now going on to the second floor, which by the way, all 24 rooms of this hotel are on the second floor. There's no rooms on the first floor. And that's because uh, this area is prone to flooding, storm surge flooding. So with climate change and sea level rising down the road, you don't want this to be impacted as bad during hurricanes. And even now today, hurricanes are gonna be bringing in the storm surge, I'm sure covers much of this area. So it's a little bit safe keeping things up here keeps the lodge going a lot longer and it prevents a repeat of what happened in 2005. So a lot of the design and engineering into this hotel has climate change and uh, hurricanes in mind because you can't ignore the fact that we are in Florida and very prone to hurricanes. So we have here the various rooms. This is room 204. Like I said, there are 24 rooms. We are, by the way, at the grand opening. So check out the amount of people here. Yep, we are in the Everglades because I don't know what the heck that is. All right, so with the key card, you're able to get inside the rooms. So we're now entering the two bedroom unit here at this hotel. And once you come in through your door, right on the left side, you do have your kitchen area, which has a full size fridge, microwave, you got the sink, stoves. And then when you go straight ahead, you have a full size bathroom. So you have your bathtub right over here. You have a sink with a lovely mirror there. You got extra towels, of course, just like a normal hotel. Then it looks like uh, this might be Flamingo. So it's really nice that they added a touch of history to the elements of the bathroom. And then of course your standard toilet. There is a hair dryer down there. There's looks like a mat for the bathtub, which is really nice. And then one thing over here that I miss, thermostat. So you can control the temperature. It is currently set at 70 degrees. And if we walk down the hallway, we have your closet area, which has hangers want to hang up shirts to dry or whatever uh, you got pillows blankets here and this is the two bedroom so I'm showing you the first room which has a decent sized bed view outside shows the parking lot and the other building it's got more photographs on the wall it's really nice it's very comfortable it doesn't feel like you're in the Everglades and then of course central AC a huge plus there are outlets by the way there's two here two there and I'm sure there's more around there's two more over there and down here we have the second bedroom, which just pretty much has a bigger bed from what I'm noticing. So smaller space here and a near identical view of the other facility across. Of course, more outlets. I love that they have plenty of outlets. Then over here, we have the living room. This is where you would spend most of your time outside of the room. You have your air conditioning unit right there. The holy grail and the selling point of this really and if you guys notice at the ceiling level, it looks like shipping containers. That is because this is a repurposed shipping container unit made out of steel and it's uh, more durable. The windows are impact resistant for hurricanes and they should overall in theory withstand uh, a really bad hurricane. I love this desk right here. It's very spacious. You can sit down with your laptop, for example, do some work here. There's a coffee machine right there. And then of course, each room does come with a balcony with two seats on each side and a wonderful view of none other than Florida Bay. So you do get bay views here and there are a bunch of balconies along here facing the bay. It's really nice. If you want the Everglades, you go outside, you do a lot of activities, uh, but once you come into your hotel, it does feel like you are in a hotel. And I think it's the air conditioning that's selling it for me. But looking at the exterior, you can see here, like I said, it is a, it's made out of a, steel shipping container so you can see those elements on the outside here we're entering the next unit over which i believe is just a one bedroom but you do get your same kitchen facilities here you've got living room space directly in front of the entrance and of course another balcony that you can stand on with a view of not only the guy bradley trail right across but like i said the florida bay 
course. This is about how close you are to your neighbors in case anybody is wondering that there are literally the walls right here. So the wall is kind of like right there. You're literally right next to your neighbors, but you are here at the Everglades. So it's not like a party town or anything. Everybody should be quiet and respectful of their neighbors. Coming back inside, we've got our one bedroom, single bedroom here with a closet. I don't know if the two bedroom had this. This is really nice. More outlets, a bed, decent sized bed. This bed faces the Florida Bay along with its balcony. The other room had it facing the other building. So this one does have a little bit of a better view. Over here, we have the bathroom, which is a full size bathroom. It feels very cozy in here. Got our mirror right over here. Hair dryer as well, floor mat for the bathtub, standard toilet. We have a closet here with, uh, assuming with more pillows, blankets in the future. They would have uh, your hanger space right there for you to hang all your stuff. So we saw two rooms today, which is what they allowed us to view. There are of course 24 rooms. There's uh, ADA accessible rooms, which I believe are in this facility right in front of me. Because while there are stairs here, there is a long ramp down there. And I believe they also have elevators attached to the restaurant. It is a long ramp I am seeing, but they do have you covered if you have special needs and uh, still want to stay at the Flamingo Lodge. This building here is uh, the restaurant. Looks like they're still doing some finishing touches to it, but we go walk over here we can see we have the ramp so if you do need to get up via ramp you can do so or you can come over here and take the elevator directly upstairs and this is where you will be assigned the room if you have an ADA room booked all right so we are now entering the restaurant through the back side and as you guys can see there are seats outside there's actually a lot of seats more than I expected even some cool designs here like half a table just kind of sandwiched along the rails here very spacious table right here with large high seating looking into the restaurant there. You've even got one table down there that is right at the edge of the rails where you can kind of see the Florida Bay from there and every one here is obviously getting the breeze from the bay which feels really nice right now. Now if we just work our way inside, show you guys the actual restaurant. So this is the interior of the restaurant. I love the lighting. I love how spacious it is, the variety of seating. If it's just you and someone else sitting, you get the smaller table. You can get these, these high tables right here. You got bar seating right here. I love that they've incorporated the bar again because the old one had a bar, so got to bring the bar back. And then we've got what looks like communal seating where if you have a larger party, you've got two of these tables on either side. We've got smaller tables for uh, three seats. I think you can add a fourth right there. Then you've got your traditional four seaters right here. Some with just a wood top design. I don't know if they're gonna add more to it. And others with a map of the region. You've got Florida here, the Bahamas, Cuba. Now if we walk over here, this looks like where you would order your food. So you probably have some cold pastries or, or beverages here on display, order counter on each side. Uh, perhaps the menu would be back here. By the way, I'll throw up a picture of the menu so you guys know more or less what you're gonna be able to eat here. And of course we have the kitchen area in the back. So the elevator will take you right inside just by the entrance of the restaurant, or you can take the ramp up. I just wanna show you guys where you end up. And if you're going to your room, you just kind of walk down this little lovely walkway. Well, I've been fishing this area since 68, 69 with my father when this was nothing. And it, it was a real laid back, rural type of vacation. Plus, you got to get used to the mosquitoes. Mosquitoes were so big they had FL numbers on them. Or, you know, the roads back then, part of the roads were dirt. I've got pictures of even my father coming down here and they were dirt. If there was a high tide, the water would be over the, over the road. One thing about it, when I used to come here as a kid, even in thereafter, is, you know, you had the antenna right there. If you saw the antenna, you know you were close. And the second thing is if you smelled the mud. I, I, I'm glad to see it's really come back. It's nice to see it modernized for the general public, because this is what I see, hard roads, concrete, you know, these type of, of facilities. Come here, enjoy the environment. You've got facilities now where you're comfortable. You've got to have a restaurant. You're gonna have 
air conditioned. <laughs> There's even Wi-Fi inside. Is there really? <laughs> you got Wi-Fi. You got tour boats. You got guides. You got a marina. You got a lot of things to do. Trails and everything. That you know, that is, you're not going to be bored. You know, the sightseeing boats go out there at sunset. You know, you talk about Key West. I think we got the best sunsets over here. So before we say farewell to the Flamingo Lodge, I want to just give you an exterior view of the, the hotel. So if you got the restaurant down there, you've got the ADA buildings right there. You've got the 200s rooms here, which are your standard rooms, along with more all the way down there. It's really impressive how many rooms they have here, but it still pales in comparison into what they had back in the day. So the old lodge had over a hundred rooms, if you can believe that. And that's because they had rooms on the first floor as well and just uh, spread more throughout the area. But uh, they obviously had to reduce so they can have rooms elevated and they are on stilts, as you guys can see there. I believe they're 13 feet high. The clearance here is seven feet. So I believe the, the upper level is 13 feet high. So I wanna know a few things here that I wrote down about this new lodge. So like I said, it is a 24 room lodge. There is no swimming pool. The old one did have a swimming pool. The room configurations go as follows. Studio, one bedroom, which we saw, two bedroom, which we saw, studio ADA and two bedroom ADA. Those are the ones we did not get to see. Those are the ones, like I said, attached to the restaurant. One thing I also wanna know is for this grand opening, there was no entrance fee to the national park because they wanted a lot of people to come in and celebrate the grand opening. But if you're staying at the lodge, you do have to come in through the main entrance to get in to check in. And it is a $30 park fee, which everybody that comes into the national park pays that fee. And so will you coming to the lodge. But the positive thing is it's $30 per car and it's good for seven consecutive days. So if you have seven days or less, you can pay that $30 fee to get inside the national park and not have to worry about it for your entire stay. And it's good for the entire car, like I said, so I don't think it's too bad and it goes towards funding the national parks, which is a big plus for me. We have now made it to the Guy Bradley Visitor Center. This visitor center was damaged in 2017 by Hurricane Irma and had been closed ever since. Now it's not reopening today because that reopening happened earlier this year, but they are having their little grand opening ceremony a proper grand opening ceremony with various speakers inside and we're gonna go check it out right now. All right, so we are now inside of the Guy Bradley Visitor Center. This has been closed for some time since after Hurricane Irma came through and now it is reopening. So we're gonna check out what this visitor center has to offer. There is the first floor, which you guys can see right behind me. There's different displays of fish and, and different species of wildlife that you will find in the Florida Everglades, as well as some displays with a lot of information about the area, not just the Everglades National Park, which by the way is massive, and we are all the way down here, but the entire South Florida region, including the Florida Bay. So you guys can hear behind me, they do have some live music to kind of liven things up as we get prepared for the grand opening uh, celebrations. And upstairs, as you guys can see behind me, are different merch that you can buy, which is really nice. You can buy an Everglades National Park hat. There's a sticker set here. If you collect those, it's really nice. Junior Ranger vests. I mean, they've got different kinds of books. They've got books. This one I really love. They have a lot of old photographs of the Everglades, Everglades National Park when it became a national park, and just about everything you could ask for. All right, so something really cool if you come to the Guy Bradley Visitor Center is that on the second floor, not only do you have all the exhibits to learn about the Florida Everglades, but you can also get a great view of the Florida Bay from up here. And I'll show you guys by just turning the camera. I mean, it is, they have so many big windows here for you guys to just enjoy the views of the Florida Bay. Guy Bradley was a game warden who lived right here in this village of Flamingo. And he was murdered in 1905, protecting the resources that we love. And he got on his skiff and set sail. There was no Yamahas or Mercury's. <laughs> and it took him a long while to get out there. And when he arrived, he encountered Mr. Walter Smith and his two sons, one of them by the name of Tom, whom he had had a running with before. He found them shooting a rookery of birds for the plumes. And when he got off his skiff to make that contact and take care of business, they shot him. They murdered him. It wasn't until the next morning that his brother and the search party found him drifting off to sea about 10 miles from here. Go! Port on! Port march! Get for personnel! Freeze and arms! 
I'm standing outside of the Marina store, which is, you guess it, also in Flamingo. This is a great way to come get some last minute items or if you run out, because the drive back is not, it's not fun driving out of the park and back just so you can get like food and snacks. This is nice. They have like a lot of stuff here. Got shirts, hats. These are Under Armour branded Everglades National Park shirts. Even jewelry, artwork, got stickers here. Everglades National Park stickers. There is ice cream, cold beverages, including sodas, juices, vitamin water, uh, sports drinks. Just like a normal gas station, really. Frozen meals, got lasagna with meat sauce. You know, again, stuff you would find not just in gas stations, but supermarkets as well. You've got your macaroni and cheese, your dry foods. You've got cereal. There's even dog and cat food if you happen to bring your pet. More toilet paper, especially if you're camping. Uh, napkins, silverware, tissues. Something I do want to note is that the prices might be a little higher than normal. So these little cup cereals are $2.55. This bottle of Hershey's syrup, chocolate syrup, $6.05. I don't think it runs that much out in the normal supermarkets. This little bottle of lime juice is $3.19. You got sulfur $1.25. That's, that's cheap anywhere you go. $1.75 for the cup noodles. Now this is nuts, $3.15. I don't think this costs that much in a normal supermarket outside of the park, but it's $3.15 for this, $3.79 for the tall can, $6.05 for these bumblebee lunch on the run snacks. They've got the tuna salad kit and chicken salad kit as well. One thing that is really important when you're out here, if you want to fire up the grill, you need some charcoal. This is $18.55 for a bag, an eight pound bag, and you've got $10.35 for this uh, light charcoal right over here. And you've got butane fuel, 435 for the Zippo butane fuel, small can. Got all your hygiene needs taken care of over here. Got small toothpaste, 219. Toothbrush for 139 if you happen to forget. Got cotton swabs for 145 for 30 count. You got deodorant, hand sanitizer, bigger toothpaste. This one is 225. You've got uh, stuff to do laundry with. So, I mean, they've got you covered here. All right, so I just got back from the store. Have my receipt here. I didn't buy things that I would normally buy if I were staying here. I'm just buying stuff to keep me, you know, satisfied until I get back out of the park and eat some real food. But I got a Tropicana Island Punch, some cookies, and Big Mama Pickled Sausage. This is more for my girlfriend. Those three items came out to $8.16. The juice was $3.49. The cookies were $1.65, and the sausage is $2.45. So, eight bucks on these three items. Uh, I can imagine it would be expensive to go shopping for a week stay, for example. But of course you have the luxury of packing as much as you want into your car, knowing that you're gonna be at the lodge with a stove, refrigerator. You can pack as much as you can in a car because you're not flying here. You're not restricted by what you're flying in with. You're driving in here. So bring anything from the groceries that are cheaper outside of the park. And if you have an emergency and need something extra, then you do have the Marina store here to take care of you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about the lodge. What about the hotel rooms? Would you want to stay here? It's very out of the way. So when you come here, you're not coming for a night. You're coming for two, three, four, maybe an entire week and enjoying all the Everglades has to offer, making this your own week long getaway. I mean, they've got the Marina store to take care of all your needs. If you need to uh, get food, snacks, uh, personal hygiene items, and then they've got rentals such as kayaks and bikes uh there's even boat tours i don't think i mentioned that there's boat tours there and then at night the universe comes alive and you can stargaze it's such a it's such an awesome experience but let me know by liking this video if you want me to personally check out the lodge and stay there for a night or two and document my experience and even try some food at the restaurant so with that said be sure to subscribe hit that bell button so you'll be notified when i do upload a new video and come join the channel we've got over 20,000 subscribers Thank you so much to everyone that has already subscribed, longtime subscribers, and new subscribers, welcome. And with that said, I will catch you guys in the next video. Okay, I'm standing in front of what used to be an old gas station in Everglades National Park, right nearby the Flamingo Lodge. It's crazy. There used to be a gas station here. It blows my mind, because when I come here, I have to keep in mind that this gas that I have in my car has to last me all the way to Flamingo, and then all the way back to the nearest town outside of Everglades, which is, uh, Florida City and, and Homestead. So I need to take into account how much gas I have in my car. But back in the day, I mean, people would come down here not worrying too much about their gas on the return home or wherever they were going afterwards. And uh, they would be taken care of here at the gas station. Cause look at this, there was a full fledged gas station here. 
You can see the pumps on each side. You can see someone filling up their really old car there. And uh, where my vehicle is at right now, there would be presumably two pumps here. 